Mr. Dame Dash, welcome to your first one-on-one -on -one with Hype Plus. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Yeah. A little tired. Yeah. Well, fresh off a of birthday. Yeah, how was the birthday? Just hitting that mark in your life. It was good, you know. When I reflect, I'm happy. All the things I've done up till now and the things I'm going to do. Yeah. Where well, I'm at with things. Okay. Well, just for the, um, for the audience, uh, we uh, made a trip all the way to Florida to come see you. And uh, was, why, why Florida? Why are we in Florida? Well, I wanted to be someplace hot in the winter. I didn't really want to be in the mix. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, we found a studio. So it was like a place I could focus without compromise of quality of living. Mm -hmm. And I went to live on a lake, you know, all that type of shit. Yeah. So for the winters, we out here. And you go back to, uh, I'm guessing, like Los Angeles, New York? Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah, really. Yeah. Right now we do Wyoming. And between that, we go to LA and New York. I'm gonna read something. Universe started responding to my movements. That's Dame Dash quote. Do you remember that quote? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've said that, I don't know when. Culture Vultures book. Oh, Culture Vultures. Yeah. yeah. And I think you, you was in a flow. Yeah. It was that the process going into that, just kind of like, just spitting from your, your, your thoughts, your spirit? Yeah. Probably I was a little high, drunk. But these are things I think. Right. Well, it definitely landed on me when I heard that. Um, it made me think about you. Are you a, a spiritual a spiritual person? Like, um, yeah. Are you spiritual at all? You meditate? I mean, I'm in tune with my one, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I think spirituality, it, it doesn't come in like one form. People practice mm -hmm. different ways of dealing with themselves. Mm -hmm. But I have a form of spirit, spirituality for sure. Right. It might not be the traditional sense that everyone else might look at. Okay. But it might be, I don't really know. It's kind of like your own. I just talk to myself. Yeah. I have conversations with myself and I ask myself how I feel and I ask myself what's bothering me. Okay. You know, okay. you know, I reflect a lot. You know, manifestation is like a big thing, but this is something that I believe you've already been on this like for years. I remember a story about um, you and uh, um, your Rockefeller team going to mansions that you guys couldn't afford. And uh, were you, did you think that was something that impacted your mind? Like what, what got you to that mind state in the first place? Yeah, before I get something, I have to visualize it. So I always visualize the best version of what I want, go see how much it costs, and then I need to know how much I gotta make to get it. Yeah. And then I figure out what I gotta do to get that. It's good to know what you want, so you know how hard you have to fight. So. Some people might not understand if they want a big house. Mm. It's not only about buying the big house, it's about the bills that come with it. So you gotta actually look at how much that big house is gonna cost, and how much it's gonna cost monthly, and what you gotta do to make exactly that amount so that your conversation with people, if it's not a dream or the cost of what your dream costs conversation, mm. then we ain't got nothing to talk about. So if I'm supposed to be getting paid, you know, if my bills for this house are 50,000 a month and somebody's talking to me about 10,000 a month, then I need to have a different conversation and that right. conversation can be had. I just have to find where to have that conversation and who to have that conversation with and what I gotta do. So you always have to be able to visualize it and it's important to keep people away or not to listen to people try to fuck that visual up. Negativity can kill a dream, it does kill a dream. Because you can do anything. But if you're dreaming and someone tells you the worst part about that dream or why you probably can't do it, it might make you stop dreaming. Nine times out of 10 it does. Mm -hmm. So I get really offended when I'm dreaming and I'm visualizing right. and somebody tries to mess up that perfect visual with a concern. Right. Concerns are what ruin the world, and they're programmed to stop us from making our own dreams come true. Right. You just said something um, that made me think about Bob Johnson. My tie-in is that 
you know, he, he talked about being in uh, the deal flow. And you mentioned that, you know, you have a $10,000 conversation, but you might have $50,000 bills a month. Um, how hard is it to find those deals, to be in the deal flow, particularly when you are independent and free thinking? All I think in is product. How much the product costs to make, how much I'm going to sell of it, or how much I'm going to sell it for, and how much I'm going to sell of it. Okay. You know, it's about my margin. So if it costs me $5 to buy it and make it, and I can sell it for 100 or 105 I know I'm making $100 every time I sell that product. And how many of the things I need to sell to make whatever money I need to make, okay. then that's how I approach it. And it might not be one product to get to that destination. Right. It might be three or four. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So... For me, as an independent, the way an independent, for me, the way I think, is in bills. You know? Overhead. That, that shit is everything. Because, again, you buy some shit and you think that's it, and it's not. So you have to be able to buy it, but really, how long can you sustain it? Right. And what do you have to do to be able to sustain it? So some people hustle for licks, and at times I do that, but, you know, it takes a long time. Means you have to build something, have a consistency of selling, of, of, of having a certain amount of success, and then it gets bought at a multiple. Right. And that's a lick. Right. Or you might catch somebody that wants to buy a building for 20 million and you catch the building, another guy with it for five and you sell it and make a, right. that's a lick. Right. That shit happens, but you can't depend on those things. Right. But if you have a product that's good, and it's dependent on how good it is. That's all it's dependent on, is how good it is and how much you have the ability to make people aware that it's available. Then you should be able to sell shit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those are the way I stay in the deal. It's not by looking for them, okay. but by creating them. Okay. By, by creating a project that or, or something tangible that has my point of view behind it unapologetically and selling it right some people are just used to getting paid i'm not used to getting paid mm. i'm used to selling things mm. and that's the only way i've ever known how to do anything and that's what keeps me independent right. is the ability to get some work make sure it's good to package it up mm. to be consistent and to put it out yeah even hearing you say that it made me think about harlem it made me think about guys like Nicky Barnes in terms of package and good product. Yeah, but he snitched. Okay. But I get it. <laughs> and, 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 and by the way, that was Mr. Untouchables is one of my favorite documentaries. But, Thank um, you. As far as um, the product and selling, you know, what obstacles do you think a lot of us face, particularly like black Americans face, um, when it comes to selling a product? Lack of confidence. Product being lack of quality, lack of consistency, lack of discipline, all of that. Anyone can do anything because people do it. Why can someone else do it and you can't? Right. That's what you got to figure out. So if I walk in the company and I say, oh, God damn, you got every single thing a successful company has, then you're not confident and your product must not be right. But even if your product is good, if you don't package it right, if you don't know where to sell it, how to sell it, if you don't keep up with the new ways to do things, yeah. then you're going to fall behind. It's about the person. It's subject to the individual and how hard they want to work or how lazy they are, how hard they don't want to work. Mm. It's about how tired you will be before you quit. Some people stop and they're not even tired. Mm. I'm not stopping until I pass out. Got gotcha. you. You don't get any concern about that? Just Yeah, I fucking do. Yeah. I be trying to, like, because you, your body starts breaking down. Right. So I do strategically make sure I get my sleep. And if people around me aren't aware of the fact that I need rest, I make them aware. Yeah. That when, I, when, you, you know, when you saw what happened with Jamie Foxx, did that kind of, like, at least self-reflect like you do? Like, maybe I need to... I'm still... I don't know what happened there. I, the jury okay. is out. That's uh, true. I, 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 that's a mystery that's to me, and I hope he's all right. That's true. But I'm curious to know what's going on there. Yeah. I, I hope he's okay. 
Harlem 1980s. That was the time you was coming up as a young man. Now, as far as you just mentioned, we just mentioned Nicky Barnes and, and the whole thing of snitching. That has come back to the forefront. And snitching has been a thing that our culture does not rock with. And you just now was like, nah. What is, your, what, what is the definition of snitching I'm from Dame Dash, like, just like from an OG standpoint? When you commit to doing things with your friends, and when you get busted, you tell on your friends so you don't have to do the time. So I don't consider a civilian that tells the police a snitch. Mm -hmm. But someone that commits to that life, if you're telling to not have to put in some degree of work, yeah. or so that you don't have to go to jail, and you've signed on to that life, you're a rat bastard. Yeah. If you sign on, you're a rat. And it's that just, was kind of this, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, you. That was kind of the story within um, Paid in Full. Like there was some snitching that took place at the end. Paid in Full, honor up. Yeah, paid in full, yeah. yeah. You know, the problem with paid in full is, you know, even though I was there, it's not my story. Okay. So it's hard for me to speak freely on how I felt about it because, you know, it's kind of none of my business. But I can talk about my experiences, you know, a little bit more openly and how I feel about them. You yeah. know what I mean? See, there's, um, I did, a, I did an interview recently where I see you as like a, an example, a blueprint of a, of a black entrepreneur or just an entrepreneur. We don't have to even put necessarily a black label on it. But my stance was I did feel that there was too many black entrepreneurs and not enough black corporations. Um, what are your thoughts on just that perspective? Because um, as a company owner, I find this, that sometimes too many of us want to do our own thing instead of uniting and getting behind one forefront. So that maybe one day we can retire from these things. I don't, I don't see a lot of black corporations retiring our own people. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, cooperation means cooperation. Mm -hmm. It means everyone has to stick together that's on the same sheet of paper instead of, you know, fighting for the plug and, you know, looking at it as a competitive thing. And that's how other cultures function. Mm -hmm. But what I want people to be clear about me is I'm a little different than the average entrepreneur because I'm, I'm highly creative and I like the creative process. So an entrepreneur can find a company in distress, you know, buy it, bleed it out, liquidate it, and license it. And it could be a creative company, but they didn't do anything creative. You know, they'll hire a creative agency to give them a look and so on and so forth. But some of these people that you meet that own these companies are fucking nerds. Really, really corny. Yeah. And um, I actually enjoy the creative process. Yeah. I like to make the movie. Yeah. I like to edit the movie. I like to make the clothes. I like to make the music. You know, I have a point of view. Yeah. I like the creative process, but the business in me protects my creative process. Before, I was known for, correct, for, for protecting other people's creative process. Right. Now, I'm creating mine. So like where you at now, this ain't a studio, this is my office. You know, because I need to be able to do all these different things because that's what I do. There is a time for business, but there's a time to make music. There's a time to shoot. There's a time to design. Right. You know, I'm doing all of those things firsthand because I enjoy it. Right. Because the product that I actually make is not, my, is, is, is not someone else's. I don't like to buy someone else's. I'm the founder of my point of view, and I'm making sure the DNA of that is always going to be preserved. Right. So you have to be a monster at creativity as well as at business when you want to do both, you know, and that's me. I like to do both. Yeah. Even hearing that, it's like, it seems that there's a, what's the percentage of the artist versus the businessman? For me right now? Yeah. Artist, 85%. Wow. If it was business, I have way more money. Right. Is that kind of like um, what you think the difference is when you see is that what the difference is with these other brothers that have kind of started in your lane and they go and do these mega deals? You think they're more so choosing the business over the art? I don't see any other brothers that started in my lane doing that. I see like rappers and entertainers doing that. Okay. But I started as a businessman. So I think I'm like the first businessman that's been able to be so creative in business that it's made me actually f so famous that I could leverage it on my own products. Mm -hmm. But you know, I don't really, I, I always look at somebody that tells somebody how to be rich that's not, or the only way they've been rich is by actually telling people. Right. That's not, to me, real, that, that's not helpful. Does it feel me. like a con, maybe? 
Always. Yeah. You know, because to me, like, if I'm going to teach you something, it's going to be about what I've actually done and been successful at. And I can tell you firsthand, this is one way I did it, and I might have liked it or not. And this is another way I did it, and I might have liked it or not. And you can choose based on my experience. Right. But it is, it's always been funny to me to see, like, people making money off telling people how to make money. But they never made money at any particular the whole business. Industry for it, in, in the, but in tell, the, yeah, definitely. And the sheep kind of follow, follow in line. One hundred percent. You know, there's, there's different kinds of uh, there's different kinds of uh, business. Yeah. Like in the fashion business, you could be a brand, and that's one fashion, and sell it and do it, or you can own a factory, and own brands for market share, but you own that factory. But right. you know, we don't talk about owning factories, right. but that's real fashion. Right. You know what I'm saying? Distribution. And that as well. Distribution, yeah. making it, all of that. Yeah. You know, I think another obstacle, and this is just, you know, seeing your journey, you kind of giving me a, uh, a perspective of what mine may be one day, is that as a black man, maybe if you were a white man, would things be even more amplified to what you've been doing? I just think I'm doing, what I'm doing is like, It's like, like on some Andy Warhol shit, but Steve Jobs at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a lot going up here, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't see nobody else trying to do that. Yeah. Like, some people just want to be rich. Yeah. Like, the only person I saw getting anywhere near that is Kanye, but, you know, it, it imbalances him. Yeah. You know, trying to, like, stand up for, for an artist and make a lot of money. And with corporate, it's like an oxymoron. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to compromise. Yeah. And I won't fold. I won't bend. And it could be to default, but I'm enjoying my life yeah. and the time I could spend with my children. I just like to be in the driver's seat of my destiny. I don't care about nobody else's, but I got to be able to control my time. Yeah. So when other when I'm working with other people, I have to move when they move, you know, yeah. and I'm not hustling for bread. I'm hustling for the amount of love and the time I can spend with the people I love. And, you know, I want to do that in luxury, of course. But if I have to like make money by not being around my family, then I think that's a loss within itself. Right. And that's been a challenge for me since, you know, I'd say like 2005. Okay. You know, it was a gradual process where it was like, my daughter Ava, you know, I was, I was married, but then I, I wasn't married by the time she was eight. And, you know, then Tallulah came and it was like, I can't miss a second with these two. Right. You know? And then I, I have another child now, baby Dusko. It's like, there ain't no business opportunity or party in the world that's going to make me miss a second that you can't get back right. of my little baby growing up as long as I got money to eat and we got money to do the things that we need to do. But like for extra money so I could be in a magazine and so people could think I have more than I do. I just became a lot less concerned about what other people thought and more concerned about what I feel is quality of living. Yeah. You know, that's one thing that you've always been like known for, which is like, you know, hustling for your children. Kind of like hearing like what the Italians are known for, <coughs> family orientation. Um, something kind of spilled on social media. And I just love to know your, 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 at least your perspective when you saw Romeo and Master P falling out it made me think about someone like yourself that will hustle for your children and then this was kind of the result of their children feeling that they neglected them. Did that like resonate with you at all to see that play out and how did you kind of feel about it? It was relatable, very relatable and extreme, you know, Master P is going through some real challenging things Yeah, and he has to go through them publicly and um, no one wants to see that. Now, one aspect about um, just the balancing of energies, right? You have the industry and there's a certain demeanor that they want you to have in the industry, but then you also have the street aspect where many of us may have come, come from. Um, there was a moment that I looked at kind of like, I think we championed you on to do that, which was uh, the video of you checking Lee Daniels you remember that like moment? Mm -hmm. Now, the thing that I thought was cool was that you actually did it versus I think some of us may not have pressed somebody at that in that stature in that light. What what made you feel compelled to 
to go ahead and address the situation there as opposed to sending an email to his attorney or like it was I done all that. He owed me two million dollars. I don't care what industry you in. You owe somebody two million, you don't say nothing about it. That's your own fault. Yeah. But you know, it's a longer story than that. But at the end of the day, he owed me two million dollars. It yeah. wasn't nothing, I wasn't even no thought about that. I don't think I care who it is. Yeah. You know? I'm not gonna I mean, you know. Yeah, some people would have avoided, like, you know, some people may not have. Most people wouldn't have gave him $2 million. Okay. So the type of person that has $2 million to give is the type of person that's going to go get it back. Yeah. That made me think about you giving opportunities. Yeah. And one of the bigger opportunities, you know, we're a comedy platform, and this is something I heard you say over time, which was the alley-oop that you gave to Kevin Hart. Mm. But I also hear, you know, that it was like, you know, you maybe felt that he didn't necessarily, you know, pass the ball back. Nah, I just be mad when he don't post my shit up on Instagram. That's what it's about. I mean, it don't cost a dollar. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't, his path is his path. I love Kev. Yeah. But actually, no one that I've put on or that I've helped will post my shit on Instagram. It's, I don't even take it personal. I, I don't know why I, I post anybody's shit on Instagram. It doesn't cost a dollar. Yeah. But, but it's the image. But it goes back to the image thing. I don't. My friends. I don't give a fuck about the image. My friends yeah. are my friends. And if that person's a good person, you can pass me anything. And I'm a, if my block is clicking and your work is good and it doesn't conflict with mine, why wouldn't I? Yeah. But I can't get anybody to do that. Kanye won't do it. You know? He be posting and that's my man. Stuff. But he won't post my shit. And that's my man. Yeah. You know? Kev won't do it. I love them all. I'm not mad. It's a human trait. There's something about that that help, that hurts. They always find an excuse not to want to help in that way. But you don't have to. I'm not sitting around crying about it. I'm only answering that question because you asked it. You know, it's just, it's just, but I don't, I, I'm not the guy that would ever run around and say, everyone that I helped, it's your obligation to help. Yeah. But I know that anyone that helped me, I would always help, but I, you know, fuck them. Yeah. I, I honestly, like, you know, I, I don't even think twice about it. Yeah. But I think being in your position, it's, it's probably more so active service, you know, the gyms, Whatever. the gyms that you give. To, to well, that, you know, that's because I want to. Yeah. So that as well. But. Again, like any one of my friends, if they need me to post up, I will. Yeah. But for some reason, all my friends, all of them, 100% of them. Okay. Not like the ones that have that, anyone over 10 million followers? Yeah. They're it's not a different posting. different game. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm just thinking about um, in terms of like, you ever heard the phrase, the white man's ice is colder? Always. I say it all the time. Yeah. I think that's a little bit of what... Um, you experience, I, I feel that we experience that on our end because... That's, our, that's the whole business model for them to control us. Mm. That we think their ice is colder. Uh, I mean, you know, I'd never have. Yeah. But yeah, that's an issue that I have with most people. And that's probably like when you walked in those rooms, you know, back in, those, in the days there's when no, you were... There's in. no probably about it. Yeah. But the thing I want you to understand, I don't want to be in those rooms. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, yeah. again, I was thinking about that today. I was like, shit, I've been like working with people for a couple of years now and, you know, I don't get into so many altercations with them. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because I like the people I'm working with. That part. I don't, I don't see, I, I get to choose who I work with and these people already know I have taste. I don't have to convince them. Mm -hmm. That's why I chose them. But when you're working with people that you can't choose, you have no choice, you know, it's going to be conflict when you have to kind of teach somebody how to treat you. Like when you're a soldier talking to a general, but you don't realize that the general has to teach you that you're the soldier. Mm. There's no way a soldier's going to show me how to fight a war that has nothing to do with them, that they didn't put a dollar up on. Yeah. And you're not going to act like you fought for this and you didn't. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people were doing in those environments. And it's just an environment I just, I don't see the value in it. It's a waste of time for the wars that I want to win. What I'm looking for is way bigger and it takes longer. So everybody got there, they cool. If they got there, they're there. I'll meet you there, but I'll go there, get there my way. You're a big advocate of calling out culture vultures, unless, uh, uh, well, in the past. I haven't heard as much of that conversation. It might be an old convo. Um, what about black culture vultures? Yeah, what about yeah. them? They yeah. suck. Yeah, would you consider um, like like a DJ academics as a black culture vulture. You start in trouble now. Next question. Okay. <laughs> now you're looking for clickbait. Uh, okay. As far as um one of your bigger interviews, can we address like the Breakfast Club conversation? Yeah. It's kind of in line with that. The Breakfast Club conversation you went on and made a stance about like you know ownership, and then it was a back and forth with DJ Envy. 
fast forward to recent times, um, DJ Envy had Ebony K. Williams on his platform. Have you seen this debate about would you date a bus driver, a guy that's the nine to five guy, and be caught into that? I think I missed that one. Well, the debate was that she said that she would not, and she's a you know a um, a host of a show, and you know pretty much status wise, and she told Ayanna Van Zandt that she wouldn't date a bus driver. When it comes to the everyday man, do you think a man has to have status? in order to be able to provide for a woman. Um, what is your, your definition of a man? Man will do anything that he has to do to make sure the people that he loves don't have to do anything they don't want to do. A man's job is to take care of his family first and not make his family work or worry. Mm. And a man's job is not to be taken care of by a woman. Yeah, what about the word protection? Like is that? Yeah, protect. Yeah. That's part of it, 100%. That's yeah. a man's job. Now, in recent times, there's been a lot of rappers getting killed, you know, and it made me think just the type of guy that I've at least studied and, like, watched you. You ride for your, for your team, for your family, for your business associates. You know, if you really are loyal to what the cause is, you'll stick to it. Just from a perspective of the outsiders, was there a time where you had to prevent someone like a Jay, a Beanie, or any of those guys in those past that protection that steer them clear of danger. All the time. That's why I got out that business. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about physically, like, this is during, like, big, we lost big, we lost Yeah, pop. all the time. Yeah. Anything, like, specifically that you could at least share? Nah. Those kind of conflicts, somebody had to be embarrassed and it wasn't me. So I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. <laughs> but, you know, okay. I think we all know through the years that my knuckle game has been known to be sort of proper. I'm 52 now, so don't try to test me. I'm done with it. Who your favorite boxer? Right now? Yeah. Hmm. Or even of all time? Of all time is Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson. Yeah. Was it more the spirit that you liked of him or was it the Ma actual? Muhammad Ali, both. Yeah. Yeah. You know? He was nice. He'd tell you what round he was going to knock your ass out in, and, you know, he was, he was challenging the system in a time that it wasn't so safe. Right. Why don't we, why don't we have more, more men like that? I don't know. I think uh, we're being programmed to get away from 100% of what a man is supposed to be, you know? And uh, it's a program. It starts with the education and religion. And um, they start working on our brain the day we're born to make us forget what and who we were, you know? You're talking like, about sp 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 uh, specifically black men or men in general? Well, black men, because there was a time when the Moors ran shit and they've tried to never bring that up and they've tried to prevent that from ever happening again. Mm -hmm. And they've tried to erase that from our brain. So, you know, teaching us in a way that we don't understand or that triggers us, things that we don't need, disarms us for life. Yeah. And the only thing left is for us to fight each other other than the people that have been manipulating our brain. And you know, it's, it's, it's genius, evil genius. Yeah. But I recognize it and I don't subscribe to it. But I recognize it and I always try to break that down, yeah. you know? I was in, I went to a, a kid's, a jail with a school in it. Okay. And the, the jail had no windows. Most of the kids had a fourth grade reading level. The therapy that was provided was from, from, from white women. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes these kids are, and they were drugged up. And these kids sometimes are let right back on the street unprepared so that they can go right back in to that hotel with bars on it that's prepaid per bed that's filth. And our culture is that commodity, is that customer, that we're trained to just be a customer and, and, and to fill up a, 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 jail, a jail bed. It's product, we're that product. We're the product and we don't even know it. And the best way to keep a slave a slave is for the slave not to know he's a slave. So if you're born behind bars, whatever bars they are, you think it's normal. Someone could tell you that's a Garden of Eden. 
but you're really in jail. Someone could be studying you, but you think you're the creator of life, even though it's not logical. And then somebody could tell you to call somebody by the wrong name all day long, you know, not Yahoo or Josh or, 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 or Yahshua, but Jesus, which is the European interpretation, which guarantees that you don't get a full blessing if that's not his real name. Hmm. So it starts there. What's your definition of freedom? Doing whatever you want, whenever you want. Yeah, would you consider yourself a free black man? Hell yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, you familiar with um talking about boxers, uh, Bob Johnson? No, what was his name? Oh my God, Johnson, Johnson. How are you talking about? Jack Johnson. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I saw him as like a a free man because even though he had like uh, a oh, bad he motherfucker, dead. he was knocking niggas out and running around with white women. Yeah, he was flagrant about it though. So he that's didn't what even I care. thought was he was leaning into it. He was. There's a lot of free men. They just don't show you the free men. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. You know, they have no choice, but there's a bunch. But free men don't run around. Like, they only showcase the ones that are not free. So they're not going to showcase a free man. They're going to showcase a man that bent over backwards. Right. To be popular, you know, become a slave to someone else's rhythm and be used as a tool to move, you know, or be the spokesperson for to our cultures to tell them the wrong shit, to control them. Yeah. When you say that, um, and, I, and I understand... But I will proceed, and you can skip past this. But I think about Jonathan Majors, you know, in terms of how Hollywood can remind you that um, they're in control to a degree because um, for many, what he did and what he's been accused of was wrong. Who? Cool. Who are you talking about? Uh, Jonathan Majors, the actor. He was God. in all the Marvel stuff. God. yeah. And, the, you know, just kind of, you know, what he did or what he's been accused of, it was wrong to put your hands on a woman. We, we know that. My perspective of it was it seemed like they held him up, but so quickly to kind of, you know, take him out the scene or remove him. Um, do you, is Hollywood built that way to kind of like, is that a, a, not our plantation or not our place? Everything's built that way. You know, certain people are uncancelable because they make their own product. They're not, you know, waiting to be hired. Mm -hmm. So if you put yourself in a position that someone else could turn your lights out, then, you know, you're living on eggshells. Yeah. But... You know, if you make your own movies and you can distribute your own shit and you're able to leverage your own celebrity. Like, if he makes a movie tomorrow, people still going. You think they're not? I think some, maybe a percentage, but people... But if he going. makes his own movies, all he needs is a percentage. I bet he make more doing it himself right. than being paid a salary for what he just did. Copy, you mean him independently going? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a crowd and there's enough that will sustain him. He has him. enough. He's, he's, yeah. What I would do is say, all right, now that I got to be at the biggest high level of pop culture... People are going to want to just come just to see what I'm doing. Yeah. They, like, the minute Kanye comes out with, 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 with clothes, people buying that shit. Right. Nobody's stopping buying none of, Nobody's listening to none of that shit. It's just corporate has to do it because, you know, they have to be worried about public opinion. But people aren't that worried about what you think they're worried about. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just, if you're in a position to be hired or fired, yeah. like, you got to look at what happens to people. Oh, so what? They took your deal. That don't mean you can't work. Right. But if you're dependent on somebody, you got a problem. But if you can make your own, then what you got to worry about? That seems to be the real form of cancellation if you allow them to cancel you. Right. So it. Like, I've seen people say, fuck you, cancel me, and keep doing what they're doing. Now, if someone could fire them, then yeah, that's right. cancel. Cancel is fired. You got yourself fired. Right. You, that's what cancel means. Now you can get fired. Right. But for independence, that doesn't. So you do believe Ye will probably bounce back? He could come back whenever he feels like it. It's on him. Yeah. Anytime he wants, he could come back. Yeah. He might not get a deal with corporate, but if he does his own shit, his shit going to go, which is where he should have started in the first place. Yeah, he was learning, going through it. He had, to learn, he had to learn, not the hard way, but, you know, his process is his process. Right. There was a big debate <laughs> um, that, that I had on, um, on our platform, and I want to see where this lands with you because I see you as someone... Again, that is building, doing for self. That's something that we can go all the way back with Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam teaching, like, do for self. And one aspect of it, you have black folks that are doing for self, but the other part of it is they're doing for self, but also then trying to get elevated into a white space. And I want to talk about, like, Deion Sanders. Did you think he should have left Jackson State? I don't want to talk about other people. 
okay. and my opinions on other people. I, that feels catty to me. You gotta ask me about me. That's fine. Yeah. Like I, I, I feel have, like if, if, uh, if Dion was like, if I say like something bad, I'd be like, if you so, if somebody does that to me, I'd be like, yo, why, why yeah. are you even talking about me? Like, you know what I'm saying? So would it be fair if I asked, would you have left? I don't know. I, it's, I, I'm not. I'm not knocking no man's hustle because I'm not there. So I don't really like talking about other people like that. You know what I'm saying? Understood. Like, unless I have a personal experience with him. So if me and him was, like, kicking it and shit, then I could be able to tell you what he did. But it's not for me to judge other people. I don't, like, do that. And I don't put myself in those positions. Right. I just know what I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that. I don't know. He might want to play with his son. I've, you know what I mean? Like, whatever happened, that's that man's business. He could do what he wanted to do. Right. And I definitely respect that. You know, I see you as a, a, a voice in our community to kind of, but not to talk bad about nobody else. If I like, if I, my thing is, if I have something bad to say Understood. about somebody from my culture, I'm gonna keep that to myself. But I'm not gonna get on social media and start telling people what I don't like about what a black man did. Ask me about what some white man did, and then I'll tell you if I liked it or not. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Can I ask you about the Vlad, like Vlad and all that? Then what about him? I watched an interview that he had with a gentleman on his platform, and. Uh, I was a little bit bothered to hear the, the, the rhetoric between them and they kind of made it seem like they kind of downplayed what you've done and what you've accomplished. Um, did you catch, catch wind of this? And I, and Vlad, I, Vlad, I don't care about Vlad. You know, people that aren't from our culture that make people from our culture talk about other people from our culture for a living, God will deal with them. Vlad's just butthurt because, you know, he had bad, like, you know. It, it was, as a it, fan, it, it was just concerning. No, that's like good. Let, let me just tell like, you something. Yeah. There's always going to be, if you're making moves, you have to expect that people are going to talk bad about you, and it becomes obvious. So to me, someone that's so desperate to bring my name up, I have nothing to do with that guy. He's not in my realm. He should, and again, I said, kind of, yo, keep my name out your mouth, you know, but like, if you don't want to, don't. Either way, you know, but everybody knows what that is. You know, that's the, it's a quintessential example of someone from another culture trying to paint a hero to our, uh, to, as a bad guy to our culture. Right. That's like normal shit. So now that he's doing it and we know it, then we know, just like you said, you should ask that man. Yeah. Be like, yo, why are you talking about somebody from my culture like that? Correct. You should talk to him about that. But my opinion on it don't matter. You know, it don't. But I didn't even hear, like, I, I hear like he says shit here and there all the time, but he's not on my timeline. Yeah. That's not the vibration I'm on. Niggas yeah. that talk about niggas, white people that talk about niggas, white people that talk about white people, all of that shit. I think that's corny. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I only talk about me or it, people I have like an experience with. And, uh, and like I'm not in that industry of that. And I, I'm not knocking anybody else, but it's just not me. That's just my opinion on it. Like I think people, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, as long as they don't hurt nobody. Judgment is somebody's opinion on what they did on their own life. That's not what I'm sitting around doing. I got no time to be worried about what other people are doing. Not at all. I'm only worried about what I'm doing. What other people are doing do not affect me. So I'm not sitting around analyzing what they're doing, nothing. If somebody does something that's G, then I'll be like, that was fly, and I might emulate it, and I'll talk about that. Okay. But if some, I see corny shit all day. That's why I live out that's here. That's the frequency, unfortunately, right? That's not my frequency. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not in that world, in that realm. <laughs> One thing I heard, um, just talking about your career, and we, we could stay in that space, is more like the big pimping and regretting that. Why did that, <laughs> why did you regret um, doing that? Because I don't want nobody. I, I regret that because I don't want nobody doing that to my daughter. So anything that I've done that someone could do to my daughter, I regret doing that. Because karmically, you know, I don't. I, no one should. I, no one. No girl should have to feel nothing that I don't want my daughter or my mom's to feel. And my mom's ain't here. So that was what it is. It just was disrespectful at the time. But I was a kid. Yeah. What's the biggest thing that you, you know, learned? Drunk. Yeah, what's the biggest thing that you learned when you got, when you start making like real money? You know, and what makes you think I stopped making real money? Say that again. You said when I started making real money? Yeah, like or when stopped you, making you real started. money. Started. Oh, I was like, what? Uh, started. That money doesn't mean anything. Okay. Money doesn't make you happy. That's what I learned. You know, everyone I know that has volumes of money is like generally very unhappy. And then money doesn't make you cool. It makes it sometimes makes you corny because then you be only worried about money. That money is the devil. Mm. Money is the evilest form of existence and separates everybody and it makes everybody worry. People will do anything for money, even gossip. Mm -hmm. 
You got podcast niggas. That's what I was thinking about when you used to use the term chatty patty. There's a whole form of like brothers with podcasts and they just talking. Yeah. Good luck to them. As far as like, you know, um, just your wisdom and your nuggets, what do you think of the main message that you would deliver to black America for the ones that like are trying to figure out their path? Be confident. Don't listen to or believe anything that's been told you until now. And don't complain unless you have a solution. But there are solutions and stick together with your brothers and sisters and respect women, period. And don't do anything just for money. And that's not just for black people, that's for anybody. You know, people in general. The fact that we are even separated by color and religion is all meant to divide us so we can't get nothing done. And it's an obvious trick. The division thing, whether it's culturally or humanity, it's all meant so that we can stay stagnant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just harping on petty shit is what's keeping us from really paying attention to the things that matter. Because there are ways to help. There are solutions. But if you stay with your brain stuck in the wrong distraction, then nothing's going to get done. And you're going to wake up with wrinkles, old, and missing out on making history. And talking about what you could have did and blaming it on, on somebody else. And then you're going to be angry. And then you're going to overcompensate because you're mad at yourself. So be free, be artistic, don't worry about bubblegum shit, don't let money motherfucking make you compromise your integrity or your values, and fight. Don't go to sleep till you got enough money to pay for your kids and your girl. Don't smoke that weed if you can't pay a bill. And you might not need those sneakers if you can't pay a bill. And you might not need to go out. You know, most people go out it to, as an escape to a life they hate. Create a life you love so you want to stay in. But you have to architect that. You have to visualize that. And don't pay attention to the distractions, the negative bullshit, and what other people are doing. Because none of that shit matters. Yeah. In closing, when do you, when do you know kind of like to get out of a, a bad deal or something that's being a person that has launched different products, when do you know it's time to let it up? When it doesn't feel good, pause. But if it, if, if it don't feel right, I don't care how much money it is. If I have to compromise, you know, if that person accuses me of things daily, you know, all money is not good money. Yeah. So as soon as any values or morals or if there's any compromise of integrity, then you got to go. And I do it all the time. And I've been tested every time. You know, it's easy for someone that hasn't been tested to say certain things. But I've been tested by the devil. And I told the devil to kiss my black ass. Mm -hmm. What does that test look like? It looks like when you sell your friends out for money, when you sell your culture out for money, when you take advantage of a child, when you make yourself and your culture look stupid for money. When you trick your culture into believing something that's not the case for money. When you showcase negative images of your culture doing stupid shit just because you can monetize it. Mm. That's the devil. And, you, and what's, you don't practice any particular faith or spirituality? No. It sounds like something of like Buddhism in terms of like at least the approach. It's a little Buddha. But, you know, nothing traditional. But I find that a lot of times things I say are similar to people's, the best part of people's beliefs. But again, I, I just find that religion is what wars are fought over. And most of the time, back in the day, religion was the army. Mm -hmm. Like they was the ones that came through and chose who did what because they was bringing that ruckus if you didn't do the right thing. So religion gets manipulated too much to know which one is right or wrong. And there's too many of them. As um, I just take the good things of each one of them, but they're all similar in the respect that it sounds like everybody came from out of space. Yeah. So again, we're we we are at your your studio, aka your office. Um, how has this? What challenges has this has been building a um, a studio company, Dash Studios? Like, has it been one of your toughest projects? 
The challenge is distribution. It's easy to make stuff, but to have everything seen by a lot of people is still controlled. So when I go to a Comcast or a Spectrum, mm -hmm. they always put me in a black box. So because a black man owns a network, it shouldn't be just considered a black network. It's a network owned by a black man. I can do more than just make content for black people. So the challenge is being not put in a black box. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I make content that's good and better than every culture's. You know what I'm saying? And I tell different stories from a different perspective because I'm not about this programming and algorithms. I'm about creating new behavior patterns by giving new kinds of content, showcasing us in a positive light instead of a negative, showcasing us not abusing each other or being abused, but actually what it looks like to have lineage and to have second and third generation money, which they never show visuals of since the Cosby show. And you right. see how that ended up. Right. So, you know, even the Prince of Detroit, the movie I got coming out next, it's a completely different image than people are used to seeing. So the challenge has been distribution. I always have studios. I have a studio in LA, I got studios in New York. You know, everywhere I go, I open up a studio. But honestly, the problem has been getting the linear distribution, like... Why can't we just create our own? Distribution? Yeah, with like um, streaming now and... Well, streaming, that's one, I said linear. Okay, Linear. Television, cable TV. Copy. That's been the issue. The other stuff is easy. Yeah. Just linear is, is yeah, digital we, is easy. We did a, a story on Bob Johnson and that whole thing that went down and the reason why he sold it. Because, you know, people called him a sellout because he sold it. But in, at least in reality, when you dig deep, he wasn't getting the same advertising do dollars as his white counterparts. Doesn't matter. You still get money. They call him a sellout because of the content he was making. That's why they call him a sellout. Not because he sold his company, but the content that the company was making. Yeah, and you you just you decided not to go even that type of route. Nah, I, 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 he got a carry carriage deal, so that's what happened. You got to get carried. So the, it's not like you could just get carried on cable. They got to distribute you. That shit costs money. So how can we? We're smart, right? We're smart people. We just don't the have the resources. That, I mean, we'd have to own a Spectrum or a Comcast or one of those things for linear, or we'd have to do it like you know yeah. market by market. But, but the thing about linear is it's almost out, you know, but it's still a, a way to, to get things done quicker. Yeah. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't saying it's ending me. You just said what's been the biggest challenge. Yeah, yeah. But that's been the biggest. Everything else has been easy except linear distribution. Right. So digital distribution is easy. Streaming distribution is easy. But linear distribution is not. Because it's a good boys club? Good old boys I, they club. Won't, I don't know what club it is. They just won't let me. They won't give me a fucking. Dish, they won't carry my shit. Yeah. So I don't know why. I've sat in front of all of them. And the excuse is because the other black networks, you know, because what happens is when you do a deal, it's like an affiliate, they, 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 they actually pay you. So, you know, there's a, a cable subscription, let's say it's $100. Every channel might get a dollar, two dollars, I think ESPN gets four dollars. Okay. So all these other black channels, I'm not saying any names, but they still making money even though they're not bringing any market share to the table. Their, their ratings are still down. Okay. So they're mad because they have to pay out even though these people aren't bringing anything to the table as far as bigger market share. Copy. But I'm like, yo, you could just give me the same deals. You don't have to pay me up. I'll do my own ads, but they won't even do that. So that's been my biggest challenge. But other than that, I mean, I just made a movie. It's coming out in 60 theaters, AMC theaters. I did that independently. Dope. You know, so it hasn't been hard. It's just been doing everything. It would be different. It would be way less challenging if I wasn't trying to do everything. So I direct the movie, I'm in the movie, I write the movie, I edit the movie. Then I gotta go distribute the movie, I gotta market the movie. Then I gotta make the clothes in the movie, I gotta make the music in the movie. But this is a choice I'm making. I, I was gonna say, that's the artist and the one of the process. That's the art in me. Yeah. Like, I, I, want, I want, the problem, if it is a problem, and the only people it's a problem to are like my ex-wives, you know what I'm saying? But like, I don't generate the income they want me to, right. but I'm able to make what I need to make. To, 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 to make sure that our company is thriving. I have to build catalogs so I can pass it to my kid. That's the whole purpose of it. Yeah. Was there a deal looking back that you wish you would have better executed? All of them, but I'm not mad. I could have, you know, now that I'm 52, I would do every single thing better now. now. Every single thing I would have done with a different perspective and lens, but I think I did pretty good for like first time doing anything, yeah. so yeah. I caught a deal, I was, you know, a label that caught a multiple and able to sell it. 
I would have done it different, but not many people could do that. Would you probably wouldn't have sold early or? I, I, it wasn't my choice. Jay and the big, I mean, Jay wanted to sell. Yeah. Yeah. This, um, just again, for us, this is big. Just for me personally meeting you and uh, being able to see you in the flesh and someone that has, you know, I don't know how much inspiration that you know that you put out here, but people are listening to your message. And to me, you would be a blueprint of, you know, what we should be striving for and being self-sustainable. So I just wanted to like, give my respects to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. The best respect is action, you know? So as long as you can take what I told you or you heard me say and apply it and become profitable and take care of your family and don't use it to, like, destroy the culture mm. and make negative images, yeah. you know, we got, we that's get, the best we appreciation. Get in trouble. We get in trouble. Ain't no, not going to get in trouble. I'm saying yeah. showing the best images. You know, that's the challenge on our end, though. Showing the be best honest. images? Yeah, because, um, and this is me being candid for our audience. I, I'd like to be authentic with them, is that uh, we do positive stuff, but they don't get no views. And then when you do the, the clickbait bullshit, they, they flock to and your numbers is up. So how do you sustain a company in this? You just uh, got to do fly shit. I find that a lot of times if I say something prolific, it goes viral. That's not negative. Yeah. Well, you, you, I mean, you Dame Dash, I mean, <laughs> you know, so it's a little bit of different metrics, but. No, you just got to say something prolific. You have to do something prolific. Yeah. So if you like giving out turkeys and shit, nobody wants to see that. You have to do something that no one's seen before that's positive. That's the challenge and that's the art. I, I was looking, going, I had the same conversation with my daughter. You know, she was like, you know, and, and, and she was like, but things have to be negative for it to go. And I was like, my shit? That's negative goes, but there's some positive shit that goes as well, mm. you know? But you have to create a different algorithm. Yeah, and that's going against the grain, and that's the, the, the path of a journey, man. It, it just constant good shit turns into an algorithm. You can manipulate an algorithm like that, but most people that manipulate things are doing what's the easiest and the most negative. But it's no, it's no art in monetizing negative shit. It's not an art. It's cheating. Yeah. But that's the artist in me. I'm not the entrepreneur. Well, that's, the biz that's the business part. I don't give a fuck about the business part. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. I, I don't care. You know, like, I got to figure out a different way to make money. So I'll do this and do a positive and make money doing something else. But if the only way I can make bread is, like, to make, like, clickbait or something that's negative, then you're in the wrong business. You got to get in a business where you get praised for doing good shit. Right. You know? When you make a good movie and it gets in the festival, that shit goes. You make money from positive shit. It's right. just harder. Pause. Right. It's not the easiest thing to be positive, but so what? Life's not meant to be easy. Did you know? You, that, that, you, that's, 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 if you want to call that a challenge, been my challenge. I won't fucking hurt my culture for money. Because mm -hmm. every time you put out something that's negative, it hurts our culture. In what can you like? In what way? Have if you show done? a fight and some catty shit, or have two black people fighting each other, or, you know, opinions of each other, and they get into a beef and da 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 da, that's not good for us, is it? No, it doesn't help. It doesn't. It, help. It's that, that, it's the problem. People get celebrated for doing dumb shit, so they do more dumb shit. But it's uh, niggas get killed like that. For sure. Uh, like how many how many murders you think? Happen, starting from bullshit said that on 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 either Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. How many niggas you think got killed? I know a, a lot. Yeah. So it can't be good for our culture. And you know what's happening every time that happens? They're laughing at us. So they make make us think it's okay to do negative shit for money. But when somebody gets killed, that shit ain't funny. And a kid doesn't know no better. They can't see the future. So a kid doesn't know what it looks like to be in jail as a kid. You know what I mean? Nobody's telling them that. They're just showing them how tough they are and how many views they get for, you know, saying that they c c committed a crime publicly. Mm -hmm. But then when they're doing that 50, 60 years, it ain't that, you know, and when you, you grow up and you're like, oh, shit, I literally just did 40 years for some shit I did when I was 12, when I, my brain wasn't developed. Mm -hmm. People are manipulating that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's the game plan to keep this going? Keep what going? Keep the business, keep the hustle going. Making you. movies. I'm making clothes. It's from, about having different verticals. From a from a family lineage dynamic. 
I make brands that now my children can run. Okay. So CEO is my brand. It's my family's brand. Now they can go do what they need to do with it. Dusko Goes to Space is Ray Rocky's brand. Now she could go and make that go. It's hers. You know, anything Dash, right? The different verticals that we have. Blue Rock. If somebody in my family wants to take Blue Rock to another level, they can. Right. It's all there for them. You want to make a movie? All there for you. You want to do fashion? All there for you. You want to do curriculum, kids' books, hair products, vitamins? Mm -hmm. All there for you. You can sell socks, sneakers, anything. So I got too much work for my kids to sell. Mm -hmm. I'm not passing them no money. I'm passing them work. If you give a kid money, they're going to fuck it up, and they're not going to fight to keep it. You got to give them work. Mm -hmm. But that's even you have to, at least I have a brand to give them. My kids are supposed to be better than me. So whatever I've done, they're going to take it and take it to the next level or they're not. But they have the opportunity. There's no excuses. I did the rough stuff. How would you rate yourself as a father? As a father or someone that's raised children with baby mothers? As a father. I should have been able to work it out with their mothers, so fail. But the one now that I have now, I think I'm doing well because I'm with her. Gotcha. And I can raise my kid every day. Got gotcha. you. But I did the, you know, I, don't, I, I, I failed as a full-time father because I wasn't one. Yeah. I did probably better than most, but that's not excusing it. Why is that so important for you to be an Uber father? Like, Because I love dad? my kids. Why How should I love something when I love my child? I'm saying, did your dad, any, like, thing with your dad? I don't know. What was his story? I mean, you know, I was from a broken family. I saw him on the weekends. So, yeah, definitely. Maybe connected. And it's all connected. Yeah. I'm trying to break a cycle. So coming from a, 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 a you know, if, if I came from a broken home and my kids are in a broken home, I didn't break that cycle. So I failed. Yeah. That's the most important cycle to break. So now, you know, but I'm, I'm not saying that I'm not, you know, they're not in distress. They're still happy kids. Yeah. But it would have been better if I could have worked it out with their moms. Yeah. Mr. Dame Dash. We appreciate this one-on-one -on -one with you. As always, I'm sure people are going to get some good wisdom out of this. Thank you for your time.